a soldier in combat gear, another yells into a phone, a female sergeant, soldiers link arms in a huddle, a man and woman embrace, another man lifts an infant. Real warriors, real battles, real strength. A soldier in combat Major gear. Jeff Hall. I've been in the Army for 17 years. Major Hall was my battery commander for Operation Iraqi Freedom 1 and 3. Sergeant Bingham. He said that we were going to storm the gates of hell today. I would say, all right, sir, let's go. The first deployment, when we entered Baghdad, the people were really glad to see us. It seemed like the year just flew by. Captured a lot of people that needed to be captured. Um, it just seemed like we could do our job. It was the second tour that I started to really feel it grinding down on me. I couldn't find anything that we were doing that was advancing the ball down the field. We essentially was kind of just driving around until we got blown up. Photo of an IED explosion. An IED incident where two of the guys that was in my tank unit that was attached to me was killed and one of the lieutenants was uh, wounded severely. And um, I don't know why, but that shook me. I mean, it really shook me to the bone. I had seen dead GIs before. Uh, I'd held a couple of guys as the chopper came in to pick them up. And um, I just always was able to troop on. But for some reason, it was like the, the straw that broke the camel's back for me. And my anger started to really come out. I could tell when he walked in the door of the hangar. He wasn't the same man. Sherry Hall, Jeff's wife. He would say things, and his eyes would get black. He would have a deep, dark look in his eyes, and that was not Jeff at all. We just kept hoping that things would get better, but it wasn't. Photos of Jeff's family. The impact on the girls. When I came back, I became more and more distant. I used to do everything with them. That all ended. That was not important to me anymore. I, I didn't want them to be part of what was going on with me at his motorcycle. I looked at my bike to just get away from everybody. So I'd get on it and I, I would literally ride a thousand miles. My back would just be killing me by the time I got off it and I didn't care. It was the further I could go. If I could have drove it into the ocean at that time, I would have. But in the deepest throes of the depression that hit me, I stopped riding it all together. I was gonna sell the bike. I didn't need it anymore. I was selling off all my possessions. I didn't want anything anymore. I worried. I really, I never, ever worried before until he started telling me, I just want you to go away. Take everything, take the kids, and just go away. And I knew I couldn't leave him alone. I started viewing suicide as a way to just stop. I was just wanting to turn off the 600 TV sets that was going on in my head all the time. I just, I couldn't handle it no more. So I started having suicide ideations uh, to the point where I was actually in the backyard with a pistol uh, thinking about killing myself. And the only thing that really stopped me was thinking, my God, my kids are gonna come home from school and find me this way. In his office. Jeff's frustration and anger um, really had reached a peak. At the same time, his wife expressed to my wife concern and then to me directly, that, that Jeff was very negative at home. He seems hopeless. He does not see a path to the future. As soon as I had that cue, plus my own personal interaction with Jeff and his decreasing physical performance on the job, I knew that we had to take him for, for professional care. Colonel Especially Daniel Pinnell. I called directly over to mental health. I saw them and I told them, if you're not able to help him immediately, if you are not capable of making this happen here, then you need to call me immediately. If he's non-cooperative or doesn't show up, contact me immediately. I will be involved in this until we get him to the person or place that we need. It wasn't until Colonel Pinnell noticed and helped me find the right person on Fort Polk. And uh, Colonel Pinnell knew about the program in uh, Washington, D.C. And he recommended that I go to that. It felt like the cat was out of the bag and there's no way I can put it back in. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. And believe it or not, about 100 pounds of weight came off of me right then. I started to see a little bit of hope in his eyes. And um, he asked me to go with him. And that was hopeful for me because at that point, I didn't know where we were going to be by the end of the year. So Sherry spent group time with us where she could hear other soldiers saying the same thing that I was saying. She was able to understand that, yeah, there is some pretty dark holes there. And for me to understand that she sat back home worried to death about me. 
trying to stay strong, trying to have a face for the rest of the family who's constantly asking, how's Jeff doing? And not knowing because I don't call. Um, you know, I could see the stress on her and the strain. And we kind of came to a middle ground where we could start talking about these things. On a patio. And uh, it helped us. I will tell you that I think that PTSD will grab a hold of you without you even knowing it. But I don't think it's an animal that can't be killed. I think that you can defeat it, but you can't do it on your own. I tried to ignore it, and it came back probably tenfold on me because of that. So don't be afraid to come forward if you have trouble. Real warriors, real battles, real strength. RealWarriors.net